Fabulous. So we're going to talk about accelerating your sales force career. So I'll talk about some of the topics um, that I've put in the slide deck today, but also we'll reflect a little bit on um, some of the things that you've talked and shared with me on this on this call as well. So um, I'm coming very much from a coaching background on this call, which is about asking you questions about where you're at. But also one of the key takeaways I'd like you to have is that the coaching tools and techniques that I'm sharing with you today, you can also apply those in your Salesforce role going forward because coaching is a very important skill set to have if you're working as a Salesforce admin or a BA or a consultant. Um, the, 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 the transferable skills you know, massively apply really. So I'm going to be talking about when you're kind of going in there for and working in a new ecosystem, new industry, um, I want to make sure that you've got a positive mindset. So we're going to be talking about that first, then talking about your focus and clarity around which roles are right for you and what that what, what would that look like. Um, and then we'll move into that career profile. You know, how do you want to pitch yourself into the workplace? And then just think about those boundaries and balance for you also, because I think that's equally important that you kind of are clear on what, what you need um, as a professional and how work crosses over into life. So just a bit of background to myself. So I'm Heather. Um, I have my background. Um, I became a, a career coach in 2006 and ran a career coaching company and business coaching company for six years. Had a team of 20 coaches. Um, and through that business, I started using Salesforce to manage that business. And that led me then into being a Salesforce consultant. So I started getting trained up in Salesforce in 2010 and actively then set up a Salesforce consultancy in 2012 um, and launched the Super Mums program to empower other mums with Salesforce skills and other professionals because we attract and support a whole range of mix of professionals now um, in 2016 to grow their sector. So now I'm very much involved in delivering a consultancy skills course for Super Mums and also this career coaching program that we're going to be launching next week, which is around helping people take the steps to be a fantastic Salesforce consultant. So lots of experience and, um, you know, it's been really fascinating on my Salesforce career to see how, you know, I'm, I've always worked as an independent Salesforce consultant. So I've seen how and what is important and how to present yourself. Had a lot of learning from that because obviously I don't win every project that we're going for um, but also as an employer I've interviewed um, a lot of Salesforce professionals and I know what looks good and what doesn't look good on a CV you know where you can see the people that make the most effort so I'll be sharing some of that also um, but just a bit about super mums um, for those of you that perhaps don't know um, what we do um, we're launching the Accelerate Your Salesforce Career Coaching Program um, at sort of middle of July so I'll let you know more about that if that's something of interest and um, we've been running training courses in admin marketing cloud and consultancy skills course and I think the admin course very much provides that added value support around work experience hands-on mentoring to quality assure your work because I think one of the things that you need when you get into or secure a job is somebody who can verify your work um, and that you've actually got hands-on practical experience. That's the biggest difference between getting that first job or not getting your first job quite often. So we really try and provide that full package of support for the admin course. But by the time you get to marketing, cloud and consultancy skills, um, we'd normally envision that you're sort of halfway there really in terms of building that professional skill set. So our training courses provide a different range of skills. We have um, volunteers. So if you've got two years plus experience, you can volunteer for us um, and provide mentoring um, to our trainees. And we also have people who are trainers and ambassadors for Super Mums. So they, they do that because they love to give back. It's also a great thing to have on their CV. Plus they also can develop the mentoring and coaching skill set that I'm talking about today to support others in the workplace around them and their clients. Um, so there's different ways that you can get involved with us. So let's talk about um, maintaining positivity. Now, I think what I'll talk about is the context of life, because we're not always going to be positive um, ourselves. But also the four key principles that I'm going to share here also reflect very much of what you'll find when you go and work on Salesforce projects and how 
people will interact with the Salesforce transformation process because they'll all go on an emotional journey. And so I talk about emotional intelligence and being aware of the emotional intelligence for yourself, but also being aware and, and understand the emotions that your clients or your users will go through when you're implementing Salesforce. So let's just take a look at the four different kind of emotions that might go through this. There's more than this that you can think about, but these are four that you know, have always stood out for me. So the first is a team development um, model called the Tupman model. So whenever you form a new team, so this might be you going into a new workplace, it might be you and your partner at home, it might be you and a new client and creating a project team, is you're going to go through an emotional journey whenever you create a new team environment. So you'll start off with the all good intentions of forming and that's putting in place the principles of this is how we believe we're going to work, roles and responsibilities, um, you're defining you know the boundaries and and what everybody's doing but what you'll do is then start to put those in motion and you'll work you'll go between a steer a phase of storming and norming which is where you're going to go back and forth a little bit where you'll put into place what you envision to be working then also you might challenge that a little bit and that might end up in arguments it might end up in debates it might end up in sort of one-to-one -one conversations um, depending on the level of how how it's not working um, but it's great to have this and for everybody to be aware in the team that you might go through this because people who aren't aware of the Tuckman model might get really over um, you know might be really sort of feel emotionally stressed by it and not see that there's a light at the end of the tunnel so if you can be aware that you're going to go through this storming norming approach and that's okay and that it's okay to have those discussions it's okay to question the original roles and responsibilities it's okay to clarify them with a view that you want to get back through to norming and then performing it allows that space for it not to necessarily go smoothly because we all have these rose tinted glasses like we're going to form a new team it's going to be brilliant we're going to you know glide through it without any problems that isn't the reality quite often than not and what it's important to do is set the tone at the beginning to say great we're a new team this is how we're going to set out and work um, we're going to go through the likelihood is we'll go through this storming and norming phase but it's okay if you're not feeling okay or happy with exactly how the team's working make sure we communicate let's communicate redefine re-clarify rethink and if you put that um you know if you manage that emotion with a new team that you're working in whether it's with your partner or with a new company that's great if you're working with a new salesforce customer on projects it's really good to have that as well that discussion because then they know it's okay to question and and to re-clarify something if you've not got the right communication balance or the tools aren't working for them or whatever it is it allows them to air that without it being an issue and that you can redefine the way that you're working as a team and once you've got that balance you can move into a state of performing where the team is really performing and continuing to improve on how the team is operating so I think the Tuckman model is quite enlightening in how a team will operate and the emotional journey that you might go through. The second emotional cycle to be aware of is the learning life cycle. And with this, you'll go through a learning dip. So whenever you're learning something new yourself or whenever you're teaching people Salesforce as an end user, they're going to go through this learning dip where they have an emotional dip. And again, it's really good to communicate this to your clients to say you are going to go through this journey where you're feeling really positive and really excited now about the prospect. I'm going to teach you things and it's likely that you're going to take a little bit of a dip here and be worried or maybe a little bit anxious because that is normal. It's OK to go through that emotional journey, but to know that this is a dip and actually what you'll do is once you start getting hands on with the product and putting it into practice, you're going to come out the other side. So, again, just be aware of that for yourself when you're learning anything new, but also impart this learning dip with any Salesforce customers that you work with um, as you go through and be aware that they're going to go through that dip. The next one is the Kubler-Ross grief cycle. And so you see this um, 
you'll see this yourself maybe if you've you know people have been going through this with covid right now in that they've lost their normal way of life um, they might have lost their job um, you'll see this also on salesforce projects where they're they're losing their old way of working and they're feeling emotionally stressed by this because maybe they love their spreadsheet maybe they love the tool that they currently use and so they might be going through this whole sense of denial anger bargaining depression accept you know we want to get them to that point so we have acceptance and getting them there and so again it's just having that emotional intellect to know where you are on this emotional cycle to know that you're in this stage and you can identify with each of these stages and help yourself move towards acceptance um but just know that it's okay to be in this cycle i think that's what's important is that you accept that you're in this cycle and you're aware of it but it, you'll go on a journey with it um, but equally with whenever you're working on a salesforce project you can see people go through this cycle so if they are negative in a workshop um, you can speak to them to say okay what is going on for you right now you know why you know what, why are you feeling the way you're feeling and, and then you perhaps can identify with them to sort of understand if they're in the grief cycle or if they're in the learning dip or what it is that's causing their stress or anxiety. And then you can work with them on moving towards acceptance through using some of the coaching tools and techniques that I'm teaching you today. And then the fourth is the mindset model. So people can be in quite a fixed mindset, um, you know, whether it's kind of yes or no, um, you know, they don't like to be challenged or they don't feel they're going to be good at something. So that's a difficult place to be in. What you need to is, is encourage people to be in a growth mindset and you need to be in a growth mindset where, you know, I can learn anything I want to. I'm going to overcome these challenges. You know, I'm going to create and we'll talk about the grow model. You know, what are your goals? How can we move you forward? What are your options to move forward? So you want to be in a growth mindset and not feel you know that you can't move past obstacles but if you're working with any clients equally you can explain to them well look you know you're here right now um but how can we get you to move forward how can we get you to move beyond this and move you into a grace mindset so this this principles around this is very much um comes from coaching it comes from change management techniques it's thinking about where you're at and what we want to do is move people into a positive place so as a Salesforce consultant, I very much try and use positive language, positive communication, create positive visualization of goals of where people want to be. And I embed that in all my language in how I speak and facilitate workshops and how I speak to customers, because I want to keep a positive outlook on everything. Equally with myself, if I'm having one of those, you know, down days, I'm quite good at that negative chatter in my head, as I'm sure everybody else is, that you've always got that little... Uh, gremlin on your shoulder chattering away saying you're not you know you're not good enough or that isn't good enough what you've done so having a positive mindset is really important with yourself but also to have with customers so there's different things you can do around this the first is have positive affirmations um, so make sure that you're you know look up positive affirmations find some that really resonate with you and say them to yourself three times a day, print them off and have them around you. Um, I've got some in this screen deck and the slide deck today that you might take away, but keep reminding yourself, if you keep saying it three times a day, you will change your psychology in your brain. So equally, if you're using positive language with your customers and positive affirmations and embed that in your communication, that will chart, start to change the psychology of your customers as well and help move them forward. Um, the second is create those positive anchors. So this is maybe more a reflection of yourself, but where did you feel really positive and really happy? Because whenever you perhaps walk into a new client or you're walking into an interview, you'll have those nerves. You don't know what you're going to meet. You don't know how you're going to come up, you know, how that interaction is going to go. And so how do you maintain your confidence and your positivity? We want you to internalize positive memories um from where you have before and then when you're about to walk into the, those positive places bring those memories back into the forefront of your mind you know and be conscious of that because that will help you reconnect with those emotions 
bring that all into your body. So when you're about to walk into that potentially nervous situation or even a negative conversation that you've got to tackle for whatever reason, you've got that positive sort of positive memories built up inside. So on our coaching course, we, we dig into all of these in much more detail, but um, these are the principles that you can have. And alongside that is around positive communications. So using positive power words, body language and energetic words in every way that you approach and communicate with people whether it's in interviews or workshops etc is really important so be mindful of those pick out words that matter and be conscious around how you embed those in your powerpoint how you embed them in your narrative and you maintain positivity because there's nothing worse than having somebody who you're interviewing who is negative or in you know being in a workshop where the facilitator is drawing on negative stuff because that's going to bring the the whole emotional energy down so you need to make sure that you're reinforcing everything with positive communication and the fourth is a positive relationships if you embed the other three things you'll obviously have more intuitive positive relationships but it's important to find your tribe as well so if it's linkedin groups or facebook groups like super mums or it's trailhead and um, sort of trailblazer user groups find a tribe and get involved you know be surrounded by that positivity Surround yourself with people who are celebrating stuff that gives you motivation, that gives you accountability, you know, ask questions, ask for help, you know, get involved in stuff because, you know, in my world, my normal world, I don't have anybody that understands Salesforce. I have no friend, no immediate friends, no family that gets it. So for me, the Supermoms community and my team and my tribe, you know, they understand me, they get me, they understand the life that I have as well and that balance. So, you know, find people where you share traits with, and it might be around products that you love. Maybe you want to be a product specialist or a marketing cloud specialist. So find people and connect with them online or indeed in person when we get back to it, where you can have those positive relationships um, and start to really build that. So I want you to make it happen and to start moving these things forward. This is one of my positive affirmations is make it happen. And so thinking about those things that I've talked about, I want you to create a plan for success. Um, and I do a planning exercise. I have a coach that I work with every quarter and I plan and I shift things every quarter. Like literally, I've just had my coaching um, one day course last week and I shifted my diary around. I shifted how I worked. I shifted what I wanted to get trained on. And I just have a plan now for the next quarter. And it might change after that. But what it does is it help me realign back to what is it that is important for me right now? What is it that I want to achieve for the next quarter? And that's very much where career coaching comes in. It's about reflecting, thinking, planning, and being accountable to yourself for moving forward. So the way that um, I think about a plan for success is first think about your values. So do a values exercise and find out what is important for you. You know, what are the values that you want to live out right now? The best way of reflecting on that is to think about where, you know, what have you done previously and what most satisfied you about what you did? Um, and to think and define those five core values that will make you happy right now. Um, the second is to assess the wheel of life, as we call it. And again, it's another tool that we use on the coaching program. And the wheel of life is about looking at your career, maybe your relationship, maybe your relationship with your kids, maybe your health, maybe your money, financial situation, and to appraise that on a scale of one to 10, all those areas, and identify those areas that you really want to work on for the next sort of three months. And then once you've identified the key areas that you want to work on, we use something called the GROW model. And this is where you're identifying your goals. So what are your key goals for the next three months? What is the reality of your situation? And actually writing that down can be really powerful because it helps you realize like actually where am I right now? Um, and it can bring it to life and make it real. And, and the reality is across any of these goals that you've talked about. And then we think about the options. So what are your options to move forward? Whether it's training, getting a mentor, whether it's having coaching, whether it's, um, you know, what is it that you need to do to move towards those options? It might be even researching, doing more research around the career options that you have. 
And once you define the options, then you'll write down what you will do. This is what I will do for the next three months. Once you've appraised your options, what are you going to take forward? And what does the vision look like? To, you know, going back to your goals, what will success look like in three months time? And then the thing that makes you accountable, because you can do this exercise, you can write it on a piece of paper and then you can just leave it in your drawer, put it on your desktop, not look at it again, which is obviously the worst place to be, is you can do journaling, which is where every day you reflect on how have I worked towards my success today? How have I worked towards my goals today? What values have I lived out today? And what am I thankful for? So reflecting on gratitude. So your journaling is about making you accountable to have I have I worked towards this and to not beat yourself up if you're not on track, like it's OK, but to just keep reminding yourself what your goals are each day and to make a conscious decision about working towards it, even if it's the smallest thing that you do. So create your plan for success. That is really important because if you don't have a plan, you don't have it's you don't have a map. You don't have a map of where you're going. You don't know what you're doing. You know what step to take in front of each other. So people don't tend to progress in their career if they don't have a clear plan of action and they haven't thought through where they want to be. Now, when you've thought through where you want to be and you've got your goals, then this is where we'll talk about raising your profile. And I think what's really important is that you feel proud of your background um, and where you've, you know, what you've achieved before. So even if you're stepping into a Salesforce job role, it's really important to bring those transferable skills with you. And the quickest way to secure a job is to find a job that is most reflective of what you've done before to move into the sector. So it might be that you've worked in a certain industry before, um, marketing or sales or automation or whatever it is, um, or a sort of car industry or manufacturing or travel. Um, and work in that industry because at least then you've got the transferable knowledge of that industry, but in a Salesforce capacity in the new role. Or if you've worked as a quality tester or worked as a CRM consultant for other products, their transferable skills straight into a Salesforce product. It's just using different products. So stick with a skill set that you know well. So nothing is so it's not all new. And I think what's important is that Salesforce is a career for life right you go into one job and then after a couple of years you can transition and keep progressing so as part of my salesforce career for the last 10 years i've done five different jobs within my own company i've done admin i've done consultant i've done business development i've done marketing um you know and now i'm doing training and coaching so i've done a load of different job roles and i enjoy that change because i get bored if i do more than one thing but, you know, it's a career for life. So the way to accelerate your career is to step into something where you've got um, a relationship with already. You've got some transferable skills and knowledge that will sell yourself in um, and the Salesforce experience will add value to that. But you can step into it and then you can start to move forward. So things to think about about raising your credibility and profile and to give confidence to people is think about what you're passionate about and what your ambitions are so it goes back to your plan think about you know what do i want people to know me for and then decide on how you can amplify that knowledge and awareness in the ecosystem so skill yourself up on a certain medium platform if if you want so you know twitter's very popular for salesforce um, so it could be connecting more with people on twitter getting more involved on that level talking about and sharing topics that you're involved in. Um, it could be speaking at events like user groups. It could be at speaking internal meetings when you get a workplace. And maybe that's something you could offer to do. Um, so if you're going to join a company, you could say, look, I'd love to share my knowledge and experience and speak at internal meetings about X, Y, Z. Um, it might be that you're writing blogs or you could contribute guest blogs. It might be that you contribute to podcasts or you indeed set up your own podcast. Um, and it could be that you're a specialist in client meetings and maybe you're a specialist in marketing cloud and you want to specialize in that at client meetings. So think about how you can be a professional expert 
going into a job role or going into a client or within the ecosystem more generally and start to build that presence and awareness around something that you want to be known for. And then ask for feedback. So if you get involved in that, don't forget to ask and rec get recognised for your contribution and to share that with your potential clients or your employers. So seek feedback on LinkedIn with a recommendation, attract and connect with people. So you can say, well, I've got this many followers now and I tweet this much and share expertise and advice because people love that. Employers love that, clients love that. They like to see that people have got an, a level of authority. Um, and you know appreciate that because if you start to build your profile what it will do is help you pursue your goals it will help you to grow your business profile it will help you to progress your career it will help you towards your salary progression or any other rewards that you want um, and so it makes you more in demand so it doesn't need to be big it can start with being active on social but don't be scared to write articles about things you're learning um, we had a podcast with Gemma on our summit recently and she just started writing blog articles around her exam content and exams that she'd done so she'd only just completed the exam she would learned about a new product and then she shared her exam tips with other people and her blog grew from there and then she set up a whole movement called ladies be architect of other people that were interested in learning similar certifications so you don't have to be in the industry for years or know about products in depth to start sort of raising your profile. You can start to do that tomorrow. And then the final thing I'll talk about is boundaries and balance, because with goals, with profiles, we don't want it to take over your life. We don't want it to be all consuming. So it's important to create a routine and, and habits. So you're only going to put into place this plan if you've carved out time to do that plan. So like for this week, for me, for example, this quarter, I realized that I needed more planning time. So I changed around my diary and I created two hours every Thursday morning um, or every fortnight, sorry, where I've carved out time to do planning. Every Wednesday, I've already carved out time to do CPD. So create routine and better habits and how you function to make your plans come to life and that the plan doesn't get sidetracked, that you have time in your diary to create and put in place that plan. Um, think about the team that you need around you. Again, that could be your partner, your kids, etc. It could be um, other team members if you're working. You know, how do you create teamwork where you can delegate, you can communicate better together so you feel like you're working really in harmony if that is a problem. And I think focus on what is important to you. It goes back to your heart. You know, do you feel happy in your heart? Do you feel balanced? Are you meeting the values and the needs that we identified in your goal? So get that balance right. You take control of your life. You know, if you're going to be working in a job, speak to your employer about your balance, speak to about the hours you work, um, you know, talk about the flexibility you want and shift it around within what is manageable for you or an employer. Equally, if you're working with a client, maybe shift, you know, manage the days that you're working with those clients so it fits around your family, your career and what is important for you. And the final bit that I've talked about throughout is get help. There's five things that I'm focusing around on the um, the topic of the week this week in the Accelerate Your Sales or Career series is all about the five things you can do to get help. So find yourself a mentor. Make sure you train from the professionals get the peer support around you and get a coach involved if you're feeling stagnant unmotivated um, or you need that sense of accountability so everything that i've shared with you today a lot of that is coaching skills and techniques and i think you know i didn't learn coaching with a view that it would add value to my salesforce career because i learned it in another context to empower young people with their careers and their businesses but the coaching skills, and as you can see, as I've talked through the deck today, is very applicable to actually how we manage Salesforce implementations. Um, it very much resonates with all of that. Um, and I think what's really important is that we achieve balance in our career, because that's the only way that we'll really accelerate our performance is if we feel balance in everything that we're doing and that we're really satisfied with that. So going back to, um, 
a positive mindset and where you want to be is get focused on where you want to be. The key action I'd like you to take away with today is create that positive mindset, create your plan, visualize success with key goals um, and believe that you can do it and then take action to do it. And that will help you achieve success is create that roadmap for yourself. As I say, align yourself, um, very much having some of your questions before the session started, I think align yourself with where you've got the easiest entry route, you know, align with an industry or align with a skill set that you've got and go into a similar job role where you know and you're, something feels familiar. And then start to push yourself beyond that once you've got the Salesforce experience and you can move forward. That's going to be your easier, easiest entry route um, to move forward. So hopefully that's been useful. Happy to take any questions that you've got um, as well right now. As I've talked about, the Accelerate Your Salesforce Career Coaching Programme is going to be launching on the 20th of July. So this is where we share coaching tools and techniques every fortnight with you live. We do a live session like we've done today, but we dig down into much of those, um, into many of those tools in much more detail. We get you to work through it in your own mind with a clear sort of workbook. Um, but we teach you different coaching tools and techniques that you can then apply uh, and put on your CV use for future clients and projects that you work on um, and you can move forward. So we've been running the career coaching program for our trainees now for the last six months, um, but now we're gonna open it wider for more people that want to access that support um, more widely. So if it's something you're interested in, we'll be popping you an email. The other way that you can access loads of tips and hints and build on the knowledge that we've shared with you today is with the podcast launch. So we launched a podcast um, last week and we've got different interviews with different experts in the ecosystem um, every week. So tune into Mums on Cloud9 podcast and you'll get more coaching tools and things from me, but also you'll get to hear from other experts in the eco ecosystem, which will help you explore your potential. Like you'll learn different uh, industries, different career options, um, also learn their journeys about how they progress their career and how they've made it successful. So really interesting topics that are coming up on that. So say, please do get involved with Super Mums if you want to get more involved in different ways. I know some of you said you're in our Facebook group already, which is great. So ask the questions, get involved. Um, we've got mentors and speakers in there as well. Um, so they can participate in answering questions. So let me know, do you have any other questions off the back of that and that content? Anything that's come up for you? I just needed to show your slides to my wife because when she have a stress situation, she start beating me. Ah, brilliant, absolutely, absolutely. Teach her that. I taught my husband the Tuckman model. Um, and I, uh -huh. oh. Yeah, and I say to him, no, look, we're here right now. You know, the team working, we're in the norming storming phase, right? how do we move back to norming? We need to come up and redefine the way we work. And it just helps diffuse the emotion a little bit because you can be a little bit like, <laughs> so it's, um, it's good to kind of just kind of bring that back to this is normal. It's okay. if Things aren't working, but let's come up with a new plan. And we've you know constantly done that a bit through COVID as well. We've had to reconfigure how things have worked week on week. Um, but I think it's just putting it in emotional context. Uh, she she is uh, an engineer working like a uh, piping designer in oil and gas department and she uh, understands this work like she know everything i say hey your industry is going down right now maybe you need to learn about salesforce to do implementation projects of uh, of the salesforce into the oil and gas companies uh, she say no i don't see this perspective but it just right now. I just trying to show by my example uh, what uh, this Salesforce things is working. Because right now I am in, in SMB, small medium business companies, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she is working with a big corporation. Uh, she doing projects for big corporation, and we like in a different levels. This is why one of the point why I want to join to the Salesforce, like an employee to work and have experience to work with a uh, uh, big companies. So. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, in the UK, Shell, I mean, Shell's a big global company, but they use Salesforce, they're a big Salesforce customer. So, um, you know, definitely you can walk into industries and particularly in the SMB space, and we work with the SMB team at Salesforce who sell in Salesforce to that. They very much work in the industry verticals. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that there's AEs for finance, um, you know, for um, I'm trying to think of them all now. I've got them all, I'll share them with you, but there's, you know, retail, hospitality, people always structure around verticals. And the one thing that they said is that, you know, we will hire people with industry experience or align with work around that. So they want people with that industry knowledge. Um, you know, so that's one way to definitely sell yourself in is around industry expertise. Um, and then they can teach you Salesforce. But you know, when you're implementing Salesforce, what you're doing is implementing a new process. So mm -hmm. if you've worked in that industry and you understand the process, you already leap ahead and can build rapport with the client because you understand their processes and how that industry works. And then what you're doing is factoring Salesforce to kind of achieve that. So, you know, the industry is very important. The other aspect though, is that if you've got those tech skill sets around user testing or BA or project management, equally, you can step into a project management role in Salesforce because you've got project management or you've got user testing experience or BA experience but just in a different product and i've worked on quite a lot of projects where you know i've worked that the company that we're working with as the customer has hired project managers or bas with absolutely no salesforce experience mm. because they've hired them as a ba or a project manager but what can set you apart as a project manager or ba is that you've got that salesforce knowledge because you'll be heads and shoulders above a a BA or a quality tester without that knowledge. So my preference is to work with a client where they've got a BA or a project manager with Salesforce knowledge because it's going to make the project go so much more smoothly. So I just try and get people to align with the quick entry route <laughs> that, you know, rather than completely shift and say, right, I want to do Salesforce and create a different job role, a completely different industry to where I've been before. You're not going to move as quick in getting that job because it, you've kind of got less transferable skills straight away and uh, one question about your coaching course uh, it's like a mm, like a recorded visual uh, session on like we have a, we will have online conversation about some stuff like I yeah. have I have kind of problem uh, which I see probably the problem and we will discuss about this it's working like that yeah, so the fortnightly open coaching sessions where we'll look at a topic, but then we'll do Q&A discussion around it. But also we ask anybody to bring their questions to the table, um, you know, what, they, what they're tackling that week and answer those things too. I just, I just want to add one thing. When I uh, looking at somebody who helped me write my CV, uh, I actually asked it maybe 10 more people, coaches, and only one uh, asked me the right question, uh, which I want to hear. Uh, she asked me, uh, let me, uh, let me your story and your experience before, and after that we will write your CV. Because uh, she not just a recruiter, she actually have experience into the sales force, and she understand clearly what I'm doing actually in my life and yes. what probably the companies needed. So I tried, I actually, yes, I spoke with a lot of uh, uh, hiring manager coaches and only one, I have exactly what I want. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no worries. And I think that that's right. Somebody with Salesforce experience and recruitment experience will know and understand what people both, are. Looking. Both sides, not yeah. just the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. No, yep, that's great. Thanks. Great. We can't hear you. Sorry. Try again. I think there is something wrong with my headset. So I just went on audio. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yes. Go for it. Yeah. So I, I just have uh, uh, some questions regarding, you know, like, uh, what would be the best advice for people like me, you know, like who are already balancing a full-time job and, uh, uh, and, uh, 
and a baby and then i'm trying to transition into uh, salesforce ecosystem as well and the biggest challenge i feel is wherever i see i see more um, uh, opportunities only when we do have experience and i know you know like why people prefer experience you know like uh, uh and again the second challenge is most of the jobs that i see uh are related to salesforce development is it like you know like uh, is, is there any way where we can gain some uh experience for other roles like a salesforce admin or an analyst uh like an internship are there such opportunities available that is the first question and second question is how flexible is remote working in your opinion with respect to you know companies that are hiring people for salesforce because even though most of them are open say they are open with remote working i see very few opportunities uh, when it comes to you know hiring someone remote so those are two areas that you know like i would like to get your suggestions on Yeah, so no good questions. Okay, so um let's tackle the first one. So work experience. Um there's two ways that I'd recommend people get work experience because it's obviously a harder thing to come by. Um I mean some people do it by themselves and just uh, uh, work for non-profits and things like that. Yeah, it's not really something you should go out and do and project possibly work or supporting you can offer your recommendations. So I would caution against that one. um and the other one um is to write to companies and ask them if you can shadow them or mentor them for a week so i would be you know you're going to have to take the take a week off work or take a couple of days off work and and ask a company write to them say look i'm interested in getting some work experience can i shadow um people on the job so maybe shadowing isn't necessarily getting involved but you're at least you're learning and seeing how they do business analysis which is a step further and then if they like what they hear they might give you some more work experience so think about how you can get a foot in the door um with a company and the company you know has to align you have to sell yourself into the company about why you really want to you know why you think they're a great company why you've approached them um and why they resonate with you so you know because so mostly the Salesforce ecosystem is driven by recruiters. Um you don't actually get that many companies uh that many CVs through your door of people just approaching you and it can be quite nice to be fair if people just approaching you and saying I oh, really like what your company does. Um I'd love to have the opportunity to shadow one of your team. You know, and potentially if that leads to work experience. So you have to make the effort to kind of write to those companies approach them that's what i did in my career i started doing that straight out of back of university i wrote to a council at the time and got work experience for 6 days and then i got my first job through writing to a company i've rarely ever actually applied for a job i think i've written i replied for one job and got one job the rest of the jobs i've got is because i've written to the company saying i really like to work for you um and then i set up my own company so it went a bit of a mute subject but um you know i kind of have always got my job through writing to companies and work doing work experience and getting that foot on the ladder um the third is with super mums we packaged admin into our course because we know it is really difficult to get that work experience so obviously so trainees mums and dads and um professionals have come on to our super mums program and been packaged the work experience with that job um which gives them 16 hours a week of 48 hours of work experience working alongside an experienced sort of consultancy team um because we know it's hard and it's going to be your biggest barrier to getting that job opportunity when you're competing with other people with work experience so there there are the three options i guess that you have um on that question the second question around how many remote remote roles are there i mean i you can't put a number on that um i think the reality is if we look at it that salesforce is a cloud based um solution so um you know yes you can do jobs where you're working on the system from anywhere if you're going to be going into a business analyst role or a consultancy role um BA work and consultancy can be done remotely. Um I would have to say and I we do in it remotely now during covid but there is something much stronger around being in a room with people and have facilitating a workshop. You know, it is a stronger um 
stronger method, if you like, and some consultancies, for example, will work in that way. Um, so it doesn't mean with those sorts of roles, it is about talking to the company. Normally a company doesn't advertise their flexibility policy when people apply for jobs. It's more often a, um, if you sell yourself into them and they really love you, then that's the opportunity to really sort of say, well, what's the flexibility here? Like they love you, you love the job, um, but maybe you want to work from home two or three days a week, or maybe you just want to work four days a week. So have those conversations because most companies um, will have a flexibility policy of sorts. Um, I think COVID has obviously changed that significantly and has allowed people to work more remotely. Um, but you, depending on the role you go into, if you're more technical, you've probably got more of an opportunity to work virtually. If you're working for an ISV product um, on the Salesforce, you're more likely to be able to work virtually. Um, if you're working for a consultancy um, or an end user, you may need to have some um, project client, you know, face to face time when that resumes um, versus, you know, being able to work remotely for some of that time. So it just really is talking to the company, asking about their flexibility. Um, but I guarantee if they really love your profile and your experience, they're more likely to kind of be more flexible because they want you rather than, you know, just necessarily having conversation up front. Um, like I think it is a two way conversation. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. And just one more, uh, uh, one last question. You were saying that, uh, you know, like you have the, uh, uh, you have the ability to get people to work with internship projects that is packaged along with the courses that are available in Supermums already. But uh, would you have any uh, course combining career coaching and internship together? Or is that something that can be tailor made? Because See, the, the situation I'm in right now, um, I would prefer, you know, like, uh, you know, something of that sort. The reason is, uh, uh, since I already have a full-time job, I'm not sure how will I be, uh, what, what rules will be there in order for me to approach other companies while already working full-time in another company uh, uh, to ask for an internship, you know, so that is that is one challenge. Uh, and the second one is, uh, you know, like, uh, since I'm, uh, since I'm already on a full-time job, I, I need to commit some hours for any internship that I take up. Right. So, uh, those are, those are few things that I would like to uh, get some mentorship or coaching, you know, uh, coaching help on those areas. Yeah. So I would be interested if, you know, like if there can be some, uh, tailor made, uh, a uh, package where you can offer coaching and this kind of uh, work experience under some experienced professional, it would be really helpful for people like me who have already done a certification. Uh, no, I now that I already, sorry, go sorry, on. now that I have already done that, I do not immediately want to jump onto the next certification. Like you know, the next you know, I just don't want to enroll for the next certification unless I do some work and you know, like explore whether I am a good fit and whether I like doing the work and those things. So that's the reason I don't want to enroll immediately on another certification with um, Supermums right now. So is there something that, you know, that can be done for people like me or do you think you don't have anything at the moment? Yeah, no, I appreciate completely your circumstances and you're, you're definitely not the only one in the space. I think there's there's two reasons why we, we don't offer internships more broadly. Um, one is that um, before we put anybody on a work experience project, we put them on a three month intensive training course, which is much more than just trailheads, if you like. So we do live sessions. We have somebody quality show all their work that they do, their practical homework each week, which is what we build out in the dev org, um, which is different to trailhead. It's a, a different practical exercises to build out a whole client org. And we have a mentor that quality checks all of that and that they've learned everything properly. And then they complete trailheads alongside. So we have to make sure that um, they have they have and understand all of the technical competencies signed off as assurance before we put them on a live project piece of work um, because obviously when we're putting them on a live consultancy project we've got 
a client responsibility to deliver on time and on budget. So we, we can only take people that we've trained because we know the level of depth and we've checked the level of depth of their knowledge before they go on a live project. So that's kind of the first thing and why we only basically provide work experience to our admin trainees, because we know that level of depth of knowledge. Um, the second reason is capacity. So we can only take 20 trainees per cohort in each region because of the level and the number of work experience projects that we can offer through um, the consultancies that we work with because there is that capacity issue you know we can't grow bigger than that at the moment because we don't we can't provide more work experience projects so we can only take normally a limited number of trainees um, on each cohort because we can only get that many projects for them to work on <laughs> um, so if we opened up something where it's broader we just couldn't fulfill that need and that work experience so you know we've had people come on our on our super mums admin program who've done their own study but realized actually when they've come on our program that they've got a such much deeper understanding and level of knowledge from our program and the work experience than they had just from trailhead that they've really benefited from that additional training but our program is 16 hours a week for six months like it's you know it's not full time but it's in you know it's in depth they come out with an additional 40 days worth of learning to add to their CV. Um, so I hope that just explains, like I completely get where you're coming from, which is why I encourage you, you know, if you don't have capacity to do our course or whatever, which I completely get as well, then, you know, your only other really option, and I'd, you know, just recommend is to write to Salesforce um, consultancies or if you can connect with people that work within uh, an end user and work as a Salesforce admin to approach them and say look can I just shadow you and watch you whether it's virtually just to sort of get your foot in the door and start to see how they operate how they facilitate workshops and then you might get uh, then the opportunity to sort of hands-on work experience off the back of that um, you know that feels like the other option um, I'm yeah sorry. that that's fine Heather. that's okay no problem um but yeah that really helps maybe i should reach out to some uh, people who are already working uh, in ngos or consultancies where they are implementing salesforce and maybe i can see if there is anyone who will give me a chance to look at what they are doing so yeah yeah just re just reach out like as i say it's always the way that i've got my jobs and it's the way that i've got my work experience and i think it just really you know companies don't get that many letters and people and people would be quite flattered i think if they said could you you know could i shadow you for two or three days um you know so and there's plenty of people working in the ecosystem that potentially could um you know let you shadow them on their workshops and their calls um and if it's a different time zone so if you work during the day there's nothing to say that you could target a different time zone where then it works for you in the evening so you could target somebody in the usa because then you could do it in the evening when it's actually their daytime so it's just thinking outside the box um you know it feels like more effort you know absolutely and you might write 20 letters and you might get her back from one, but then maybe that's one that's going to open that door. So that would be, as I say, it's sort of, um, yeah, my, my next best recommendation, other than obviously being able to benefit from, from it as part of a package course. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Heather. No worries. Well, great to have you both on today. Um, if there's any other questions that come up, we've got the Q&A in the Facebook group on a Thursday as well. So if there's anything else that bounces off this, then I will do. I will send a recording of the coaching session around as well for people that missed the session today. Um, so you can reflect on all that stuff because there's quite a lot in there. So I appreciate you might need to go and recap <laughs> off the back of it. So Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a fantastic day and take care. Have a wonderful day.